కోవిడ్ సమయంలో సర్జరీల గురించి అలాగే సర్జరీస్కి పోస్ట్ అయిన వాళ్ళు తెలుసుకోవాల్సిన విషయాల గురించి సర్జరీలో విధి విధానాల్లో వచ్చిన మార్పుల గురించి అలాగే సర్జరీ అవుట్కమ్ ఎలా ఉంటుంది ఈ విషయాలన్నింటినీ మనకి తెలియచేయడానికి మనతో పాటు ఉన్నారు ఏషియన్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్ ఆఫ్ గ్యాస్ట్రో ఎంట్రాలజీ డైరెక్టర్ ప్రముఖ సర్జికల్ గ్యాస్ట్రో ఎంట్రాలజిస్ట్ డాక్టర్ జీవీరావు గారు నమస్కారం డాక్టర్ జీవీరావు గారు డాక్టర్ గారు కోవిడ్ నైన్టీన్ డాక్టర్లకి వైద్య ప్రపంచానికి పెద్ద ఛాలెంజ్ అని చెప్పుకోవచ్చు ఒక సర్జన్గా ఈ గత ఏడాది కాలంగా మీరు చూసిన ఛాలెంజెస్ గురించి మాకు చెప్పండి దిస్ ఈస్ ద వన్ ఆఫ్ ద వర్స్ట్ ఎవర్ థింగ్ దట్ ఈస్ అఫెక్టెడ్ ద ఎంటైర్ వరల్డ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ అఫెక్టెడ్ ఎవ్రీబడి సడన్లీ ఇట్ ఈస్ కమ్ ఇన్ ఎ వే దట్ ఎవ్రీబడి వాజ్ టేకెన్ బై ఎ షాక్ బికాస్ వీ నో సమ్ స్టాండర్డ్ ప్రిన్సిపల్స్ ఆఫ్ మెడిసిన్ స్టాండర్డ్ డ్రగ్స్ ఆర్ అవైలబుల్ బట్ ఎ స్పెసిఫిక్ ఎ న్యూ టైప్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ థింగ్ విచ్ ఈస్ కమ్ విచ్ ఈస్ కాజింగ్ హ్యావెక్ and it is causing complications which are unknown of in a routine viral disease is what created a panic and before it we had time to think about to see how this is affecting the body and how to get over the thing it has had its played its havoc actually so the initial mortality was very high but thanks to a lot of people actually it was basically an extraordinary coordinated effort between basic scientists clinicians people who are treating the people feedback from the people all these are responsible to see the effects of the thing and how it is uh, whether it is effective not effective see these are all lateral thinking which have may have some positive thing may have some negative thing we don't know see there are so everything changes so rapidly and uh, we started getting evidence after evidence after evidence from people across the globe so the biggest thing that has happened was i think first for the first ever time in the world people started interacting with each other what has led to this sudden decrease in mortality and we were able to do this thing is that absolute good interaction between specialties across the globe and this webinars and web interaction is the thing that has made people to interact more share their ideas share their way they treating and what are their limitations how, how they overcome there are small small things that can be done which can be modified to make these things easy like initially when the suddenly there was a surge of ventilators actually so people started modifying actually they started connecting thing and then they are able to overcome that this thing so that you share it with somebody okay they they do it again so during this period it's a huge uh, blow but uh, within a very short period of time we are able to overcome and we are able to i'll not say that we are curing the disease as in today ma but at least we are able to get it to a control where we feel yes it is a manageable thing right now overall ga surgery la meeda surgery la ante avi emergency kavachu ledante elective surgery la kavachu veeti meeda covid 19 prabhavam e vidhanga undi elective surgeries are surgeries which can wait and elective surgeries lo kuda we have cancer related non cancer related so basically all non cancer related elective surgeries we wait actually there is no uh, point in uh, taking these people for surgery basically because it is not that people are worried about it but basically because the resources have to be properly diverted if i have my intensive care unit now between a a non covid elective surgery and a covid emergency a covid emergency becomes my priority so i have to divert my resources or my intensive care bed to a patient who requires an icu care it is a decision making and we have to prioritize what is important so that time covid has become very important so we had to divert lot of our resources actually surgery elective surgeries unnai ankonde kondu rolu vaayda veskuntaru ఈ లోపల వాళ్ళకి ఎగ్జిస్టింగ్ కండిషన్స్ ఏమన్నా కొద్దిగా ముదిరి మళ్ళీ దాని వల్ల వాళ్ళకి ఇబ్బంది అయ్యి ఎలక్టివ్ సర్జరీస్ క్యాన్సర్ సర్జరీస్ వీ యూజువలీ ప్రయారిటైజ్ దమ్ ఇనీషియలీ పీపుల్ యూస్ టు థింక్ యాక్చువలీ వీ షుడ్ స్టాప్ బట్ నౌ వాట్ వీ లర్న్ ఈస్ యాక్చువలీ ద లాట్ ఆఫ్ పీపుల్ హూ అడ్వాన్స్డ్ ఇన్ క్యాన్సర్ సర్జరీ సో క్యాన్సర్ సర్జరీ నౌ ఈజ్ అ సెమీ ఎలక్టివ్ ప్రొసీజర్ వీ హ్యావ్ టు ప్లాన్ అండ్ డూ ఇట్ ఆఫ్ మా యు ఆర్ వెరీ రైట్ బినైన్ డిజీజ్ ఏదో స్టోన్స్ గాల్ బ్యాటర్లో స్టోన్స్ ఉంటే మా ఓకే యూ కెన్ టెల్ దమ్ ఓకే వెయిట్ బట్ సేమ్ థింగ్ యూ హ్యావ్ అ ట్యూమర్ ఇన్ ద స్టమక్ certainly we cannot ask them to wait because a person we have, we have all ourselves seen people who have seen before covid in early stages they come with very advanced stage within one year so 
uh, we are very right, we prioritize them and tell them irrespective of whatever it is, you have to take that amount of risk. So, we have to weigh the pros and cons of advancing the disease versus taking this disease. Especially cancer related, we, we, cannot, we stop. Cannot, cannot stop. Now, we do not have that amount of uh, this thing for COVID right now. We do uh, treat those patients, see, treat them separately. Uh, but we also trying to do the routine surgery also in the same time at the equal pace actually. Suppose if you see last month actually we have done the surgeries numbers outnumbered and also the COVID numbers outnumbered but still we are able to balance out the whole thing. COVID-19 pandemic lo bhaganga hospitals ki vachi surgical cases ni ye criteria basis meera meera vibhajin chi yavar ki yalanti priority is to cases take up chestharu. Any emergency that comes to the thing, actually we have definite criteria right now. Uh, there are definite SOPs that are practiced in any surgical fraternity depending on the grade. See, any multi-trauma comes actually, any perforation comes, any bleeder comes, there is no other choice but to take the patient for surgery. There is no other choice. So, we uh, categorize them as an absolute emergency, semi-emergency and elective procedure. All elective procedures basically for resource diversion and basically we want to uh, we are asking them to hold on for the time being actually, but all emergency, semi-emergency procedures are being taken care. Meer surgery will chase napadu, pre-operative screening lo bhaganga, adhanapu screening tests ev chase naru. Now actually what happens now in a routine patient actually we have a standard uh, test that have to be done for surgery. But now it all depends now, see like you said actually suppose I have to take a patient for surgery now, the COVID RT-PCR takes about 6 hours now. Now, if you have to take me more sure, so we're getting a routine screening chest done, a CT screening done, at least the chest x-ray has to be done before. Places where, I'm, I'm talking about a place where I'm sitting in a big hospital, I'm, I have everything at my disposal. But if you go to a periphery where my, my own colleagues have to operate actually, we usually do a routine chest x-ray and uh, make sure that all parameters are normal actually before we. So, routinely we do a screening test is mandatory right now before taking this patient to surgery and if any patient is showing any signs, symptoms of fever and all actually we usually ask them to wait if it is an elective procedure or if it is an emergency procedure we get all the cytokines tested make sure that uh, we are not de we are dealing with this uh, patient and then we follow up this patient. We have as I told you about 3 percent, 3 to 5 percent of the patient turn positive in the post operative period and then during this period all of us are exposed again. So, we ship them again to the concerned thing and then talk to the family. It happens, but there is no other way we can expose actually. But again, for an emergency procedure, we cannot say anything. We just have to patient, take the patient irrespective of the status. We have to feel in the patient, take all the precautions and every patient is treated as COVID positive only. So, when you take the patient emergency surgery without testing, every patient is treated as COVID by positive by default and you take all precautions for COVID whatever precautions are laid out. Amdi, the biggest thing that has happened, every single society has come out with guidelines. There could be overlap of the same this thing said over and over again, but the repetition of the thing over and over again got this into our brain that we have to do this. Every single speciality, every single society from a small country to a big nation have come out with protocols. If you see the last one year literature, it is just flooded with only guidelines. So, these guidelines have made us uh, more this thing, but guidelines are also dynamic. Right? So, we are continuously updating ourselves with these guidelines. In this case, the first thing is that COVID-19 pandemic is the most minimally invasive surgery or not prefer general open surgeries. Initially, when COVID started, people said no for minimally invasive surgery. The guidelines, all guidelines said no minimally invasive surgery should right. be practiced because mm -hmm. It is more aerosol generating. You are putting in these tubes, high pressure, you are deflating, aerosols are coming out. Mm -hmm. So, the initial guidelines that came in said so favoring, absent, open. favoring open surgery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, with the dynamics changed, with the dynamics changed and we also taking precautions of the aerosols, how it has to be used, how it has to be blocked, how it has to be filtered and also knowing the positivity of the minimally invasive surgery, when we weigh the pros and cons of this and this, now the guidelines have totally changed. Theatres have been totally, from positive pressure we go to negative pressure now. You understand actually initially we have to have this positive pressures, pressure on touch, it has to go out. But now we cannot have that air conditioning is switched off, positive pressure is switched off. I am not saying it is, I can, cannot cure this obviously, but I, I think we are in a better position to handle these things rather than what we were before. 
ఇంకోటి సార్ సర్జరీస్కి పోస్ట్ అయిన వాళ్ళు వీళ్ళు కూడా వ్యాక్సిన్స్ వేసుకోవచ్చా గైడ్ లైన్స్ వాట్ దిస్ ఏమా నా ద వెరీ రైట్ రియాక్షన్ వాట్ యూ సీయింగ్ యాక్చువల్లీ సమ్ పీపుల్ హ్యావ్ పెయిన్ ఫీవర్ అండ్ ఆల్ యాక్చువల్లీ సపోజ్ దే గెట్ వ్యాక్సినేటెడ్ టుడే దే కమ్ ఫర్ సర్జరీ టుమారో సపోజ్ దే హ్యావ్ ఫ్రమ్ పెయిన్ ఫీవర్ వీ డోంట్ నో వాట్ ఇట్ ఇస్ బికాస్ సో వన్ వీక్ టు టెన్ డేస్ బిఫోర్ ఎస్ దే కెన్ గెట్ దెన్ సెల్ వ్యాక్సినేటెడ్ అండ్ దెన్ లేటర్ ద సెకండ్ డోస్ యాజ్ వెల్ సపోజ్ సమడి ఇస్ నాట్ వ్యాక్సినేటెడ్ అండ్ సపోజ్ సమడి ఇస్ ప్లాన్ ఫర్ అన్ ఎలెక్షన్ సర్జరీ ఐ వుడ్ రాదర్ ఎంకరేజ్ దెమ్ టు గెట్ ద థింగ్ సపోజ్ ద సపోజ్ దే వాంట్ గెట్ దెమ్ సెల్ వ్యాక్సినేటెడ్ అండ్ దెన్ దే కమ్ ఫర్ దిస్ ఎస్ దిస్ ఎ మస్ట్ సో ఈ పరిస్థితుల్లో సార్ ఇప్పుడు ఈవెన్ సర్జరీస్ చేసేటప్పుడు ఆ యాంబియన్స్ వీటిలో కూడా ఏదన్నా కొత్తగా ఏదన్నా మార్పులు అవి వచ్చాయా సార్ అమ్మా ఇనీషియల్లీ మేము సర్జరీ చేసినప్పుడు సి ద ద బిగ్గెస్ట్ థింగ్ ద ఛాలెంజ్ ఆఫ్ ద మోస్ట్ అంటే ఇప్పుడు ఇఫ్ యూ ఆస్ మీ విచ్ ఇస్ ద మోస్ట్ స్పెషాలిటీ విచ్ ఇస్ గాట్ ద హయ్యెస్ట్ ఛాన్స్ ఆఫ్ ఇన్ఫెక్టివిటీ సర్జరీ బేసికలీ బేసికలీ బికాస్ ద ఏరోసాల్ జనరేటింగ్ అంటారమ్మ ద డ్రాప్లెట్ దట్ ఇస్ ప్రెట్స్ యాక్చువల్లీ so if you are operating a patient right from the patient the patient is put in a tube to suctioning the fluid to opening the abdomen to exposing the cautery mm-hmm. exposing yourself the positive pressure in the theater that helps actually and this patient is not that i am the moment he is out of the theater i get rid of him i have to take care of him for the next 4 to 5 days which continuously involves suctioning injecting dressing changes he is coughing the physiotherapist the entire thing we are so the surgical fraternity is the maximally exposed to the aerosol compared to any other speciality beat be the post operative the patient could be on ventilator they could be suctioning draining cleansing and initially we used to get some support from the family now there is no support from the family it is totally on the nursing staff the doctors the junior doctors so there is not a pressure on the doctors actually post op care lo bhaganga సర్జరీ అయిన వారికి ఎటువంటి అదనపు జాగ్రత్తలు మీరు తీసుకుంటున్నారు నవ్ ఆల్ దీస్ పేషెంట్స్ హ్యావ్ దిస్ సైటోకైన్ స్టామ్ అంటారు సి ఎనీ పోస్ట్ ఆఫ్ సైటోకైన్ స్టామ్ ఇస్ అన్ ఇన్ఫ్లమేటరీ రెస్పాన్స్ బా ఇట్ ఈస్ బేసికలీ సంథింగ్ లైక్ యూ గెట్ ఇన్ఫెక్షన్ ద సైటోకైన్స్ గో అప్ ఇన్ ద బాడీ సో నవ్ ఐ మేక్ ఎన్ ఇన్సిషన్ ఆటోమేటికలీ దెల్ బి సమ్ సైటోకైన్ దిస్సింగ్ ఇన్ ద బాడీ సో నవ్ వాట్ ఐ హ్యావ్ టు డిఫరెన్షియేట్ ఈస్ బేస్ బేసికలీ బిట్వీన్ ద నార్మల్ థింగ్ దట్ హ్యాపెన్స్ అండ్ ద అబ్నార్మల్ థింగ్ దట్ హ్యాపెన్స్ అండ్ i should not precipitate the already existing cytokine storm by doing my surgery second thing i have to prioritize it is between what type of anesthesia i have to give now predominantly covid affects the lung so anything to do with local anesthesia or regional anesthesia i'll be more comfortable rather than doing any procedure under general anesthesia so because and you very rightly that this patient could still be harboring the virus it might show up in the post operative period actually your question is very apt in spite of screening all this you have about less than 5% of the patients who turn positive in the post operative period because the testing is not 100% right so it is likely that some of these people are not picked up and that these people are showing up in this. so the existing counseling to the patient takes all these things actually we have to tell them so many things the counseling what used to take about 10 minutes 15 minutes now it runs to 1 hour to tell them all these consequences about what is happening in this oka surgery aina patient ni vaalla family members tho udaharanaku hospital lo unna patient ni family members tho meer ela connect chestunnaru endukante hospital lo visiting hours avi ippudu lev kabatti how is that you are bridging the gap between the patient and the family members my patients are counseled 10 times on whatsapp facetime now they are happy that uh, we are using this uh, media extensively first ever time we have started using this extensively so i mean they talk to them continuously on the thing actually we have put up these devices in the entire icu unit and also now we have these devices that have come on now even if you see our covid ward actually all the basic parameters are continuously integrated now to one central station because the doctor fraternity also cannot be continuously checking them they are there in the rooms actually they are continuously connected to a central room all the basic parameters are continuously coming in so all our uh, mobiles apps everything we have continuously being updated so we are continuously in touch with them so we are talking to them so more than i talk to my family now i think i'm talking <laughs> to my patients families now gives a good uh, this thing actually we feel uh, uh, because end of the day ma see suppose somebody has come to me i mean it becomes my responsibility to leave go to the hospital so is a feel like that i can it become my responsibility doctor garu covid and non covid cases me hospital lo vastu untayi ee renditini kuda jagrataga vibhajinchi deal cheyalsina paristhiti alantappudu meeru elanti adanapu jagratlu teeskuni 
ఇలాంటి కేసెస్ ని డీల్ చేస్తూ ఉంటారు ఎని పేషెంట్ కు కమ్స్ విత్ ది ఫీవర్ అండ్ ఆల్ యాక్చువల్లీ ఇట్ గోస్ త్రూ ఎ సెపరేట్ ఎంట్రన్స్ యాక్చువల్లీ వి ట్రాల్ దెమ్ దే గో టు ది ఫీవర్ క్లినిక్ దే డోంట్ మిక్స్ విత్ ది రెగ్యులర్ పబ్లిక్ ఎట్ ఆల్ ఇట్స్ కంప్లీట్లీ కట్ ది ఎయిర్ కండిషనింగ్ ఇస్ కట్ ఆఫ్ ఫ్రమ్ దట్ దిస్ థింగ్ the route from which they go to any investigation is totally different they go through a separate route for investigations tests admissions post op everything is separate but they don't mix with the, uh, the thing chivarga doctor garu covid 19 ipudi second wave ni tattukovalante mana tarafu nunchi ante prathi okaru teesukovalsina jagratha lenti we know a lot of people who have exhausted their resources during covid times some people have exhausted their resources because they did not have any employment some people have exhausted their resources because they have to spend on health some people have exhausted their resources because they have to spend on covid which is a totally unplanned event in the thing i think they should be more cognizant about this entire thing and because a single family member getting affected it's a vicious cycle the entire family gets affected and it's the medicines though they become slightly cheaper but not within the reach of everybody and a simple disease which can be prevented i think we are not in a position for a second lockdown for people upper middle class upper class they can sustain but a uh, lot of people in the lower section will not be able to afford a another lockdown so i personally feel actually a good government initiative to vaccinate everybody please go get yourself vaccinated we know it's a droplet infection n95 masks are yes useful for people who are at high risk we are not saying those uh, gadgets which are seen on social media should be worn simple cloth we are ones which are okay you sanitize them wash them dry them actually it can be repeatedly used are more than sufficient actually only thing is make sure that they are disposed properly i mean you don't carry them everywhere actually. but i think you take preventive measures from yourself get vaccinated move as little as possible people started moving out to this thing i think you should avoid all that actually and i sincerely request all those people who can afford please kindly donate some money for those people who cannot who afford cannot afford vaccine please actually i we we been actually from our side actually we done pre vaccination uh, now i think it's opened up now they saying 45 plus we are open but now the younger generation also wants also to get also need to uh, we are not very sure about the mutants that are going to come the only thing that i see is actually we are uh, the doctor medical facility is more equipped the equipment is available that is more equipped to deal with this thing it does not mean that you should uh, spend your resources on that because it has become a manageable uh, uh, it, it should not get the thing my personal feel like thing unless and until you take all the precautions like what you have taken initially thank you so much sir yeah. for giving us the time thank you